Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the dam. Tonight, the burning. Already the team have been separated. We have gathered some incredible phenomena, some remarkable evidence, and the team have now reconvened and are conducting a Ouija board session in the Great Hall. In itself a scene of intense paranormal activity. The audience are part of tonight's experiment. Let's get straight back to that Ouija board session. Thank you very much, Paul. Yes, now we are going to do a Ouija board. Can I just stress again, if anybody would like to leave, now is the time to leave. Um, everybody please imagine that there is a bubble of white light around you from head to toe, a brilliant white light. This is a light of protection and of attraction. We have a microphone still on the floor. I'm feeling tapping noises, so let us now place our fingers on the glass and I'll ask if the Tesla machine can be blasted again for energy. Okay. Thank you. And again, please. Thank you. If you are here, say yes or no. Say yes. No, you're here. Go to yes if you are here. Are you here? Yes. Okay. Do you mean us harm? Do you mean us harm? Yes. The witches. The tapping. No, these aren't very nice. No, not here. Okay. Leslie, what was one of the questions? Where's she gone? For God's sake. Um, right, I've forgotten what the question was. What does she say? Where did you bury the bones? Where did you bury the bones? I have no idea what this means, but it's a question that Leslie gave to me. Where did you bury the bones? No. Okay, put it back in the middle. Are you saying you didn't bury any bones? Is that what you're saying to me? You didn't bury any bones? Did you bury some bones? Not moving. Everybody all right? Okay. Okay. Oh, it's moving. A. You. No. A you no? A you no. A you no right. <laughs> okay. Please tell us. Are you watching us now? Are you watching us all now? Yes. Can you do something in the room for us now? Can you do something in the room? Yes. Tapping on the microphone. Tap on the floor. Tap on the floor. Make it louder. I can't hear that in the audience, I don't think. Okay, can you blast the Tesla machine again, please? Gosh, look at that. As soon as the Tesla machine's gone, yeah. it's gone mad. No. It's gone like a few. Woo! Goodbye. Gone to goodbye. I have a question for you. Yes. Where is the incubi? Where is the incubi? <gasps> hey. Did anybody hear it? Okay, do you think we've got that, David? Did you hear it? Yeah? Tapping. Can we not pick that up on the microphone? No? Okay. Where is the incubi? Is that right? Where is the incubi? Where is the incubi? I can't. Can we turn the Tesla machine off now, please? Thank you. Where is the incubi? No. You're not telling us. Make a noise with your voice again, please. No. Yeah. David, your machinery's just died. Gone. Is that is that something that would happen? Just gone. 
Okay. Sorry, Leslie. What are you saying? No, she's giving you something else. Okay. okay. I'm trying to get you to say something in Welsh. Go on then. Moron vach. Moron vach. Moron vach. Yes. What does that mean? That's medieval Welsh for what ails thee. Ah. Okay. Do you need help? Do you need help? Tapping. I'm going to do something now, now that we have these witches. We have five cards. Normally, when we have these cards, they have our faces on them. And the audience members, they come here and they're all excited because they want to be part of the investigation team. Well, tonight's different. It's Halloween. There are five members of the audience. Each of them have a face on the other side of this card. They don't know who they are. They are going to be chosen by the glass, by the supposed witches, and they will be taken to the mortuary to be completely on their own to do an investigation. All all right, everyone? Happy? Okay, nobody knows who they are. Don't be worried, everyone. You'll be fine. Okay, here we go. Fingers on the glass, one hand on the table, feet firmly on the floor. Yeah. Ready? You can see these faces, ladies. You can see who they are. Who would you like to go off on their own to the mortuary? Who do you want to play with? Who do you want to talk to on their own? Take the glass to whomever you want to go on their own. Point to the pictures. Glass is moving. Glass is moving. Going round in circular motions, not quite sure. Pick a picture. Oh, okay. Pass that picture straight to Kieran. Don't show who it is. Kieran? Yes, go ahead. Okay. Paul Ross will reveal who that person is in a wee while. I think now what we should do is think about going off now and going off to a church, a deconsecrated church to begin an investigation there. So I'm going to hand you back to Paul Ross while we get ready to go off and do an investigation. He then will reveal who that poor audience member is who's going to have to go through the rigmarole of being completely in the dark, on their own, in the mortuary. I hope you'll be fine. I'm sure you will be. So it's back over to you, Paul. Thank you, Yvette. As the team move now to that deconsecrated chapel inside this former mental asylum in North Wales, a remarkable, crumbling, dilapidated building. Remember, after this break, one lucky, in inverted commas, audience member will be on their own in that former mortuary, experiencing who knows what. That's after this. Keep watching. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the Dam, for our final night, the final of seven nights, and tonight, the burning. A terrifying prospect in store for Yvette and the team, and for one audience member who will be joining the team, except they won't, he or she will be on their own in that former mortuary in a matter of minutes. First, though, let's have a quick catch-up and chat with Brian Shepherd, our medium clairvoyant and psychic artist. Brian, a lot of noise, a lot of activity there during that Ouija board session. What were you sensing while it was going well, on? Very interesting, and uh, we were we're definitely picking up on um, well, not only taps and the thuds under the table, which sounded like a heartbeat. You know, as someone's kind of moving quite fast and her heart is beating pretty swiftly. And also a lot of responses to what Yvette uh, was asking. A lot, a lot, a of, lot of responses after the Tesla machine had finished. Straight away, there was responses. There was information that I seemed to be getting. You know, that name again, Elizabeth, my sister. You did her wrong, you, you actually hanged her for witchcraft. Which presumably must have been something on this site, possibly, that predated the hospital. Oh, oh well, most definitely. I mean, we're talking probably, as far as I'm concerned anyway, 15th century. Now, we know your psychic art, we know your capabilities there. While you're hearing these voices, are you yeah. also seeing an image of the person uttering those words? I'm seeing, I'm seeing something, put it that way. I couldn't, I, you know, it's a woman's face. It's, it's a pleading one. You know, as you'd expect if someone was saying that to you. Um, so, yeah, very much so. I'm, I'm seeing it, but, uh, 
you know, to, not that clear, if you like, you know? I mean, now, our audience member, yeah. uh, who he or she doesn't know who they are oh. yet, will be heading on their own to the mortuary. Mm -hmm. I was there the other night, very briefly, thankfully. You, you were, were there as well. There was a lot of activity there. Would you have any words of warning or caution for the audience member, whoever he or she may be? You remember the other night, what did we experience there? And I'm, I'm just going to reiterate this. I said to you, be careful, you know, if, the, if you feel anything around your eyes or on the top of your head. And you indeed said to me, I feel hot. Well, I had a very, almost a burning sensation on my burning head. Burning sensation a, a, a on your pain, head. A throbbing pain in my right eye. I saw those right pinpricks of light. That's what I'm saying. And that's what the audience members should look out for I tonight. I think so, yeah. Just be weary of that, you know. Or anything else, of course, that they might feel. But certainly be, you know, keep a lookout for that. Okay, Just we've given them the cautious, warning. So. He or she turned up tonight with a remarkable pumpkin. I have the photograph now. I'm going to reveal it in a second. I hope they are up to the challenge. Let's find out right now as I extend the icy hand of invitation, tickle the terrifying gland of fear, and point the dread digit of doom at one person in particular. And that person is... Kieran Kelly, it is you. Give him a round of applause. As Alfonso, our esteemed producer-director, who also has signed vinyl copies of every single ever released by the Nolan Sisters, ushers him off towards the mortuary for tonight's terrifying solo audience member vigil. This is Most Haunted Live. This is your show. The webcams are streaming constantly. We record constantly during the breaks. We know you're watching at home. You are our eyes and our ears, and you never let us down. You let us know exactly what you are seeing that we, have, we may have missed. And all that information is channeled back via the interactive team and the award-winning Julian Craig. Thank you very much indeed, Paul. And interactive is coming tonight for Halloween. Thank you so much for your input. Let's go through the webcams and what you are seeing on those right now. First of all, webcam one, uh, the padded cell, there it is. A dark, shadowy figure moving in and out of the doors, being seen by Graham in Northwick and Cheshire. Uh, Phil in Leeds keeps seeing a black figure, what looks like a man in the doorway, disappearing and reappearing. And Stephen Portsmouth has seen a tall figure standing in the doorway looking into the room. And Tony and Karen in Middlesbrough have seen a person in white walking in and out of the door. What can you see on webcam one? Let me know and we'll mention you later in the show. Now webcam two, the mortuary, there's the slab, that's where uh, Yvette was earlier, where Paul was the other night. Uh, Robin Milford has spotted a dark swaying figure in the doorway, it vanished and then reappeared uh, on webcam four, interestingly, gosh. Natalie in Liverpool has seen a dark shadow moving in and out of the doorway on that one. And Kay in Northern Ireland says that what seemed to be a misty figure standing and moving around the top of the mortuary table. That's webcam two, the mortuary. Now, webcam three. Now, let's look at that one. We bring it up, the cellar. Uh, you can see the chair uh, where Yvette was last night. Very moved she was. Moved to tears, in fact. Carl's been there, and of course, Stuart Eller in the show. Aidan Lancashire saw four figures in the room, and one of them tied into the chair. Rebecca and Bretchen uh, saw a man's face at the door, which kept popping up. And Joe, Jessica, and Jack are having a Halloween party and saw a figure in the doorway that seemed to move towards the chair. And Alan and Dundee spotted a black shadow crossing from beside the chair and then going through the door. That's webcam three, the cellar. Let's move to webcam four, the upper floor. There it is. That's where Carl was earlier in the show tonight. And uh, Georgia, Jane, and Amy looking at the webcams say they saw a massive light orb fly across the door. It stopped, then disappeared. Uh, Gaynor and Essex saw a cat sitting by the door looking into the room. When Carl walked through the corridor, the cat disappeared. And Gillian London saw something walk, walk past the door which looked like a figure which was injured. Now let me tell you how to get in touch. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. You can text me, text the word screen, then a space to 80889. Text cost 50p plus one standard rate. And the website where you can see the webcams, the interactive map and send me messages direct, mosthauntedlive.com. Net. I'll leave you with a couple of thoughts. Dan in Birmingham says, hi team, be careful. After the witches last night, they could start tonight whilst you're all on the show. We shall see that in a moment in the chapel, shan't we? And Sam and Newton could see a dark figure following Kath around in the padded cell and here in the studio. What's to come from Interactive? We'll find later what's to come right now with Paul. Thank you, Julian. Well, so much information coming in. Let's find out what we can. Let's try and source and research the names we've come up with, with uh, Leslie Smith, our esteemed historian and academic, and Fred Bat, the demonologist and black art specialist. Leslie, a lot of names coming in. Yes. And the sense maybe of an execution here? 
Um, well, I'm, I'm particularly interested, but I think we've got back the witch we had the other night, which was uh, the Ellis witch. Um, now, I've done some work, and yes, she certainly was in this area. She had three husbands. There was a lot of witchcraft laid against her because, of course, she'd stepped in on a case that she shouldn't have done, frankly, and she ended up being hung. That's absolutely right. But the difficulty is the sister Elizabeth. I mean, I've done my bit. I can't find her. But Fred seems to think he's got a sister, don't you, in your work? Well, she had a sister called Elizabeth, which Brian picked up, uh, the one that was speaking about Gwen. Gwen we had the other night. She was the first case to be accused of black magic or the black arts. So that's pretty significant. She's come back again. I suppose the confusion might be we have the Elizabeth there, the sister of the witch, but also Billy Roberts sensed an Elizabeth Blunn earlier on. So maybe there are mixed messages coming through here. Maybe it's possible. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, Elizabeth, the sister, of course, by marriage, might be called Blunn. And I've just been speaking to Welsh in the audience who have some understanding of the language, and they say that it was phonetic, like the English language, which means things could be spelled in any number of ways. But I'm not confirming Elizabeth. Fred feels he's got it from his work. It's just a matter of source. By the way, may I quickly say too, I called her the Ellis Witch and he said Gwen. It was, of course, Gwen Ellis, so it's the same person. Of course, the one who came up to us the other day, a couple of days ago, I during the investigation, was, yeah. we had that name, Gwen, returning. She's from the time yeah. of Elizabeth I. She's okay. from the time of the Armada. Any werewolf action tonight, Fred? <laughs> no, nothing yet. I'm hoping. I'm still hoping for some. I mean, we've had lots of it so far. I'm hoping for a howl tonight, though. Let's hope so. <laughs> okay, well, I know any information that comes up to us at YouTube, you're going to work your hardest for us on. We will. We also still want your input. We want you to keep an eye on the webcams. We're about to take the shortest of short breaks. When we return, the vigil team have assembled in the chapel. The audience member is proceeding on his own, that's Kieran Kelly, to that abandoned mortuary. Don't go anywhere. Only just over one hour left on Most Haunted Live from the Village of the Dam. Tonight, the burning. Back after this. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the dam. The final night of seven nights of unprecedented paranormal investigation and what results have already emerged. And we are with you all the way until midnight on Halloween, which is tonight. We are absolutely live and we've dispatched our lucky audience member, Kieran Kelly, to the mortuary, the former mortuary, to be there on his own. We are keeping a very close eye on him, but let me tell you, he does not appear happy. Let's get straight back, though, to the main vigil now in the chapel with Yvette Fielding. Yvette! Hi, Paul. Hi, Paul. I hear that the, um, the audience member is called Kieran. Um, so, um, I hope, apparently he's very nervous, and I understand that, because the mortuary is not a very nice place at all. Um, I've got a walkie-talkie, so I will be trying to talk to him at some point, um, and we will be keeping a close eye on him, um, and if he wants to leave, then that's fine. Okay, we are walking outside, um, as you can see, and just next to this amazing uh, chapel, which is all boarded up, and it looks so creepy, doesn't it, Kieran? It really does. It just has a perfect Hollywood atmosphere about it, doesn't it? It, 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 it really, like really set. does, and it's very creepy. I mean, there was Billy. You're here with us. Welcome uh, onto the, uh, outside with the rest of the team. How are you? Um, how are you feeling about being here? It, it's very, very atmospheric. Yeah. Um, it seems to have been. I mean, I. I I don't want to repeat Billy, myself. hang on, come back Sorry. here, love. That's it, just so the camera can see you. Oh, Go right on. Okay. Yeah. I didn't want to repeat myself, but uh, Elizabeth Blunt. Yes, you mentioned her yesterday. Around. But I've also had a, there seems to be a connection in some way with, um, uh, Brian had an Elizabeth mm -hmm. and Gwen. Yeah. Now, although the time I gave a different uh, time period, that might be completely wrong on my part. So I'm presuming the Elizabeth he got it's the same one that's bothering me. Okay, well, let's see. Let's wander into the, to the church and have a look round um, with the, the light on the camera. Hello, Kieran. It's Yvette here. I can hear you clearly. Are you all right? Um, yeah, kind of. I kind of felt like I've got something moving in over me. When I was there, Kieran, listen out for footsteps, but also don't forget to call out. Call out for things to happen. And if it gets too much, somebody will come and get you, okay? Yvette, yeah, honest to God, I, I, can, I can hear somebody walking around the table, and then I've got this vision, and I hope, oh, my God, I've got this vision of this guy standing in the corner, and he's like a doctor. Oh, God. Um, are you okay? Do you want to come out? Are you all right? Uh, no, I'm going to be okay. okay. I'm not all right. But just don't go too far, right? Oh, 
Bless his heart. Right, this is so cool. I love it, Leah. How creepy is this? This is great. What a fantastic place. Look at this, Carl. Can you take the walkie-talkie? Carl, can you just take the walkie-talkie from Kieran for a second? Bless him. I think he just wants to know that somebody's on the other end. We've set this up. As you can see, the Ouija board there in the centre, um, all to do with witchcraft. And um, we shall see what we get in this deconsecrated church. We've never done anything like this before in a church. And um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what we get. Is this Elizabeth Blunt? Blunt? Blunt. 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 Is she here now? Was she, she a witch? She's been with me. I, I, I'm surmising she was a witch, but she's very malevolent. Quite a beautiful lady to look at. Quite picturesque but very, very um, suspicious of what's going on here. And there's also, I've had um, there's a, a man uh, with me at the moment um, by the name of Tommy Davis, Thomas Davis, but he actually worked here. And in the it, chapel or in the hospital? No, no, the, he the worked in, in the actual hospital, mm -hmm. and he used to come here. Um, but it, it wasn't, I don't think it's uh, in the Victorian times. I think it's in more recent years, possibly in the 60s. Right. But he was some kind of superintendent or looked after the premises. And he loved this place. He used to come here um, quite often. Did you just bang down then, really? No. Did you I feel it? Yeah. But did I you feel it. it? I definitely felt it, but I just You're hearing it. Move. Let's have everybody just be stand still for a sec, everyone. Is there a crypt or anything underneath here? We can't get to anything. That's the loudest tapping. I want to go to night vision and I want to go now. Um, Paul, back to you in the studio. Um, and also keep an eye on Kieran. I know he's talking to Carl on the walkie-talkie. I'm a little bit worried about him. If he's seeing the, the, the apparition of a doctor, that's, that's not a good sign. Is he all right, Carl, Kieran? He's really not, he's really he's not happy. happy. Let's go to night vision. Back to you, Paul, in the studio. OK, everybody, let's change cameras. Thank you, Yvette. It will take only the shortest of short moments to go on to night vision. Very quickly, I want to ask Brian Shepherd. Brian, Billy there was bearing out exactly what you said, the name Elizabeth. He may have got the time period confused. Can you remind us what you sensed about this possible witch Elizabeth? Yeah, well, well what I sensed was um, that um, she was a sister of the witch that was hanged. Gwen. Gwen, yes, Gwen. Uh, and we're talking 15th century. So there's the time period. Oh, the kind of 1500s, maybe the 16th century. Well... Yeah, okay, yeah. 15, uh, yeah, yeah. Probably. So long before this place was long built? Long before this place was built, Jane. long before. But I, but I feel also that, uh, you know, possibly this Elizabeth was heavily influenced by something that was already here and already ancient at that time. Ancient and possibly evil, malevolent? And evil, absolutely. Okay, now you've been the focus of a lot of aggression, I would say, over the last few nights. I've not yeah. seen you pulled around quite as much by whatever you've discovered. <laughs> no. How's that made you feel, night or night? Are you frightened tonight? Not frightened, no. Not frightened, but apprehensive, you know? Do any of us like that? That surprise, that... Well, to be that... Has that happened before in your career? You're a very sensitive man, obviously sensitive psychically. It, it has. I've been, I've been poked, I've been, you know, jostled around. Um, as I say, I, I, it's not that I'm frightened about it or anything like that, but, um, yeah, sure, it's happened before. But the other night, that was extreme. The, well, certainly the voodoo thing was horrible. Well, that was particularly remarkable. And for those who didn't watch, A, what a night you missed, and B, when they used the voodoo doll of you called a poppet, which makes it sound more charming than it is, yeah, yeah, they put the needle in your leg. You were in a completely different room. You didn't know what was coming. You didn't even know it was a voodoo night of experiment. And you reacted immediately. What kind of pain was that, Brian? Oh, well, it was, it was, a, it was a piercing pain. It was though someone had stuck something, you know, through my leg, from the back out through the front, very near my knee, you know. Okay. And it felt as though, in doing so, it had almost cut off my blood supply. Now, I should say that we are uh, ending tonight's show with a cleansing ceremony. Any negative thoughts, any negative images that people have been sent, sending us, we've channeled into an effigy that will be burnt, right. whatever people believe, before the end of tonight's show. Okay. We should hopefully leave any evil that's been uncovered here after we've gone would, and, di and dispel it. Would indeed be cleansed, because if it isn't, whatever's here will remain. And whatever comes after this building is raised to the ground... How do we know that it won't be affected by exactly the same thing? Okay, now I think uh, we've gone to night vision 
on the vigil. We've set up that table in the middle of that now deconsecrated chapel. It is a first for Most Haunted Live. Yvette Fielding, back to you, Yvette. Thanks very much, Paul. Yes, we're here in this amazing chapel. Um, as you can see, we've got um, pentagrams on the floor. Um, we'll be doing something with that a little bit later on. We've got rid of the table. We've decided at the last minute we're not going to do a Ouija board here. We're going to do something else. But first of all, um, we got some loud tapping before. I just want to see just one floor, um, and there's a, little, there's a couple of little rooms um, over to the left, and um, yeah, just to the left. Um, and I just wanted to have a wander around and see what we can get. Um, we've got um, Chris on camera as usual, we've got Daniel and we've got David on sound, Stuart Harrison, our location producer, Kath and Stuart, Robin by the door, Carl, where are you? There, talking to Kieran, who is our audience member who's in the mortuary. We have Billy Roberts and Kieran and myself. Have I left anybody out or is that no, it? That's it. That's it. Okay, let's just start here. I just want to start at this end. Just so we get used to the whole building and the floor. Right, let's call out. Billy, as I'm calling out, if you concentrate, and then I'll ask you if you're getting anyone. Okay. Everybody, I'm going to call out now, okay? If there is anybody here, if there are any spirit... Carl, is that near you? It's not near me. Sounds like... Not neat, but like in the centre. No, but it sounds like it's more in the centre. Sounds like it's more in the centre. Like it's, it's in the the distance for me. Huh? Does it? <coughs> it, feels, it sounds like in the distance for me. Can you hear it, David? Clear. Make. Stand still. Come towards us now. Come towards us. Walk towards us. I had a breath. You did hear it too, I Kieran? Yeah. Did you hear it, David? Did you did? Would, would uh, Steve Williams will be able to rewind that and be able to hear if we can hear a breath? It was very quiet. Okay, you heard something in here, Kath? What? Yeah, there is rubble. Be careful. Hello? Is there anybody here? Just a small little space. There's no one in here, Kath. Let's go into the centre, see if the banging noises get louder. Is Kieran all right, Carl? Yes, yes. Um, he's convinced something is in the room with him. Absolutely convinced something's in the room okay. with him. If you are here, tap twice for me very loudly. Make it louder. How many of you are here in this room? Tap out how many of you are here. Three very quiet ones, or was there more than that? I can't remember. Can you see Kieran? Can you see Kieran in the mortuary? Yes. Can you go towards him? What's he saying? He's being Like a conversation between two people. Lots of whispering, like a conversation between two people. Are you okay, mate? Dead bizarre. I mean, it's all like a taking place in the room. It's like a man's voice and a woman's voice. And it's like the whispering. Okay, mate. Um, I mean, one thing we'll keep looking at the. Uh, we need all the viewers at home to keep on looking at that um, web camera to see if they see anything near you, um, anything at all. He's also terrible. Okay. Seen all. Okay. Cheers, mate. Carry on. I think what we should do now is myself, Billy, you, Carl, Stuart, and Kath. We need to stand on this circle here. I want the sound in the um, audience to be taken down, so you actually won't be able to hear us. <coughs> and then I will want um, um, also, we're going to call out, stand on the circle cat, Stuart, Carl, we'll join hands and then we're going to call for things to happen to Kieran and to the audience. So Paul, I don't know if you can hear me, I don't know if we can do this, but as from now, can you take the sound out so the audience in the studio can't hear what we're saying? Can you do that for us? Can somebody confirm that that's being done? It's done. Okay, here we go. Join hands, everyone. Carl, Bobby, that's it. 
Billy, there you go. Right. Everybody stand completely still. We know you are here. Thank you for the noises that you are making right in the center of this circle, David. Okay. Please, can you walk where the audience is? Can you do things to the audience? I need you to do things to them. Can you put your hands across their faces and make them feel very hot? Can you do that? Make them feel very hot. Make their faces feel burning hot. Can you also do the same to Kieran? Can you make his face feel so hot it feels on fire? Do it now, please. I command you to do it now. Scream then, David, and I realised it was your ruddy blue boom. Do you know what? I looked at the what the is moving <coughs> yeah. on the floor. Yeah, okay. okay. Walk towards them now. Walk into the audience where all those people are in the hall. Walk towards them. Put your hands on their faces. Make them feel very hot. Walk towards Kieran in the mortuary. Make him feel very hot. His face hot. Not heard anything. Don't know if they're feeling anything. You right? You okay, yeah. Billy? You sensing yeah. anything? Yeah, this is um, it's very prevalent just here. Yeah. Um, there, there seems to be a lady with, I don't know, she had some kind of palsy. She used to like to find quietness here. Um, her name was Kitty. Um, and she's quite a, she must have been an inmate, a, a patient in the hospital for quite a long time ago. And there's a, there's a very stout man who seems to have been either a preacher, but he wasn't resident here. He came from somewhere like Conway, and he used to visit, take um, services. Are you a preacher? Whining. There's whining then as well. Oh, yeah. to speak yeah. Has anything happened, Paul, with the audience at all? Anything at all? Yvette, we're going to find out. Um, obviously, they couldn't hear what you were asking for. So we're going to find out when we take a break in a moment. I'm going to move amongst them during the break. We had no immediate reaction, but I think they were slightly puzzled. So I don't know if there's any sense. I don't know if you can find out maybe if Kieran Kelly, our audience member, yeah. is feeling anything. Can we fit, find out if Kieran's feeling anything, Carl? You've got the walkie-talkie. I have. Oh, who's got the walkie-talkie? Stuart Harrison. Stuart Harrison. Every part of me went icy cold. Did it? Yeah. Your hand was you actually went like that. You could, you could feel the. T I know it was. I've never felt that before. It's incredible. incredible. He wants to leave, Yvette. Sorry. He wants to leave. He wants to leave. He wants to leave. Let's get there. Okay. Where are you going, Carl? Uh, have you got the talk? Going to get have him. Got, have you got the walkie-talkie? Yeah. You're going to go and get Kieran. Doesn't he ask for Kieran? Are you all right? Yes. It's me, love. Are you okay? Yeah, it's very noisy. But it's, it's very noisy down here, though. There's an awful lot of shuffling going on, and an awful lot of whispering as well. It's really angry whispering. And it's, uh, it's not very nice, actually. She wants to leave. Okay. Can I just ask you, do you feel anything on, on your body? Do you feel any temperature changes at all? Yes, yeah, sorry, it is so cold. I mean, the inside of the cold is it's absolutely cold, but it went cold very quickly. It just dropped really, really, really quickly when the whispering started. I mean, we, would you like to come out now? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to buy you a massive drink. Well done, sweetheart. Well, well done. And we'll see you in a bit. Congratulations. You're a real true ghost hunter. Yeah, thanks. Can you on the area, please? Somebody's on the way, love. Don't worry. Okay. Right. Did, did so, you tell them they'll be there in about a week or so? Yeah. Cool. Um, so now I presume, Paul, that the sound is back up in the studio audience. Um, Okay, here we go. Can Let's see. Yes, of course. If um, Stuart got between you and uh, Kath. Yeah. Oh, man, woman, man, woman. Yeah. Good idea. You better. Oh, Good idea. <coughs> okay, you ready? <coughs> if there's anybody here, or the spirits that are here, draw closer. Draw closer to us now. Thank you for the noises you're making, but perhaps you could use your voice. Perhaps you could throw things. Draw closer to us. Make a noise with your voice. 
heard a very quick yeah. Yeah, I did. Can you move something in here? If you're a priest. Yeah. Me. Okay. Is this the priest I'm talking to? Yes, blimey. Are you angry with us? No. Okay. Do you know what we're doing? Yeah. So I think that he was sort of privy to this kind of stuff. So he wasn't um, a he would have um, been slightly interested in anything of a supernatural nature. Really? So, yeah, I think so. There's also, the, you know, the doctor, jo um, Dr. George Tanner Jones. Mm -hmm. um, there's some kind of dialogue going on inside my head about him having um, been um, criticized by his peers for introducing some water therapy into the hospital. Um, I don't know what it was because he believed that it would help all kinds of maladies of the body and the mind, and it didn't work. All right, so he was criticized for that. You're getting two taps for that. Okay. Do something else. Can you blow the candles out, please, sir? I've not heard it like that before, those bands. It's almost like it's underground. I'm getting a really cold blast. Can you make the tapping much faster? Fast. Faster. Okay. Thank you. Can you touch one of us? <coughs> Can you touch one of us here in the room now? Hey, do you hear that? Yes. Yeah. Whistle. Can you whistle? Oh, yeah. come on, you heard that. Yeah. You've got you to hear that. that. Did you hear it, David? It was very quiet, but it was there. It was there. Thank you. Can you copy me? Do it better. Yes. Right. That's pretty clear. Can you come into this place? Can you move something in here? Can you move some of these lights that are above us? I was just checking outside the window of the room. Outside, okay. outside the church. Do you want to call out Billy? Well, I was just going to say Elizabeth Blunt. Okay. It's the first time I've seen a smile. Did you see of, her? Yeah, she's standing over there, by, just behind Kath. And also, um, she says, um, we will not be mocked. Oh, she's saying we're not going to be saying, mocked. It won't be mocked. Well, what can, so she, what can she do? We want her to do something. Well, she's, going to, she's going to produce something, I know that. And it, her face seems to be very relaxed at the moment, so I know that she was quite stern. Um, I, what I should have said to you, on the way up here, I was very, very breathless, disorientated. She, she was around me all the time. So now she's here. And I think that, um, you know, in her own way, she was quite religious as well. Oh, was she? Yeah, so I don't think she was that um, evil but very um, menacing, I think. Um, and she was known locally um, for her remedies and, and the things that she used to do for people. But she was obviously um, executed for some kind this, of... Um, just tap, were you executed? Okay. Well, I was just constantly... Can you put it down on the ground? Can you hear it? Yeah, can. can you hear it? Heartbeat. It is like a heartbeat. Can you make a heartbeat noise again? Very strange indeed. You'd expect nothing less from Most Haunted Live on Halloween. Now, during that last vigil, Yvette asked with the sound down in the studio for whatever was out there to affect the audience. I'm going to find out if anybody responded to that during this break and let you know the other side of this. Keep watching Most Haunted Live, The Village of the Damned. Hot. Did, did somebody just touch me? 
Make them feel very hot, make their faces feel burning hot. 